Number 120 original, New Jersey against New York. Mr. Yanadi. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court. In his final report, the special master concluded that New York's jurisdiction on Ellis Island is limited to the island as it existed in 1834, and New Jersey is sovereign over the portions of the island created by artificial filling of submerged lands in the years after 1834. Although we take issue with the amount of territory allocated to New York and with the recommended boundary line of the special master, we would first like to offer the court our reasons why we believe the special master's principal conclusion is legally sound and amply supported by the record. First, the special master correctly interpreted the 1834 compact between the states, which fixed the territorial limits and jurisdiction of New Jersey and New York along their common boundary. My, my only observation about that, and, and it, it, it helps your case, I think, I was a little puzzled that the special master did not pay more uh, put more weight on the Holmes opinion in, in Central Railroad. Well, we certainly did place a great deal of weight on the Holmes opinion, and we do think... The, the special a, master didn't seem to think... It, it seems to me, on the sovereignty issue, that if New York is right, we have to overrule that. Well, they certainly did make that argument below, uh, before the special master. Some of the Amici have made that point. I did not see a direct attack on the Holmes opinion or a request to see it overruled in the exception. So I'm not sure that's... But we would have to overrule it were New York to have sovereignty, would, would we not? Yes, I think so, Your Honor. I think that, is, that case squarely decides the question of sovereignty over the submerged lands. What the court rejected in that case was an argument that all New Jersey had under the compact was a right of property under these submerged lands. Now, now as to the meaning of the jurisdiction that remains, the Holmes opinion is, is, is not quite clear, and, and, and I, I think that probably needs further elaboration. Under Article 3? Yes. Yes. Well, I well, think... Well, or whether there is a difference in Article 2 jurisdiction or Article 3 jurisdiction is not clear from the Central Railroad. Well, Justice, uh, Justice Holmes indicated in the Central Railroad case that under Article Two, New York had retained its present jurisdiction of and over Ellis Island, which he interpreted to mean was an, uh, intend, the states intended to preserve the status quo ante. And the status quo that existed in 1834 was a situation where Ellis Island was on the New Jersey side of the boundary. It was a two and three quarter acres of fast land to mean high water. It was owned by the federal government who had acquired it in 1808 from the state of New York and it was utilized as a military fort. Uh, New York, in fact, had ceded jurisdiction to the federal government in, the, in, in those conveyances and retained only the right to serve civil and criminal process. So that was the, the jurisdiction uh, that was retained by the state of New York. That was the, what we contend was the present jurisdiction in 1834 when the agreement was made. And moreover, our view is that the states recognized that the island then in existence, which was, two, as I said, two and three quarter acres, was the Ellis Island that was being addressed in by the terms of that compact. So I do... Mr. Yanati, at least as to the land that was once submerged and has now been filled in, there was a significant argument made uh, that Holmes was wrong, at least to the extent that he defined exclusive rights of property to mean well, sovereign. Well, I, I respectfully argue that Holmes was not wrong, and that he, he reached the correct conclusion. And in fact, what he did in that opinion for, the, for a unanimous court was to base his judgment upon the prior decision of the New York Court of Appeals in 1870, which had concluded essentially uh, that, the, that, the, that the territorial line was the principal and dominant purpose of this agreement, that the state of New Jersey was sovereign on its side of the boundary. Well, that, that part I understand, yes. the equation of boundary with sovereignty. Yes. But Holmes also said something about exclusive right of property. Yes. You know the three-way division that was offered in some of the briefs of the property right and the public access right and the governing right. The argument was made that all New Jersey had was a sovereign right of property, and he found that that actually supported the notion that New Jersey was sovereign in this territory. And he said that the ownership of submerged land was indicative of the division of sovereign territory and actually further and supported the notion that this was a line not only of territory but of jurisdiction and sovereignty. So I think the, the, what Justice Holmes so said... property about, means jurisdiction, and exclusive jurisdiction doesn't mean exclusive jurisdiction. Well... It, it, would there have been a clearer way to, uh, 
to uh, to say that uh, one of the states had uh, had governing authority. Well, I think it's then to use the phrase exclusive jurisdiction. The I think it's important to focus also not only on that but also on the notion of exclusive jurisdiction over the waters, and I think that is the key the key element of that Article Three because uh, New Jersey had recognized that New York had exclusive jurisdiction, but it was limited. Uh, it wasn't full sovereign governmental authority. It was limited to control of the waters, and that's how the New York Court of Appeals interpreted Article 3 in 1870. Well, it was to control mean, of the waters. It also referred to the submerged lands. That's correct. And isn't there, isn't there a fair argument to be made that when the submerged lands become, in effect, the, <clears throat> the basis for filled land, uh, in place of what had been water subject to New York's jurisdiction, that that same territory, now newly created above the ground, uh, becomes subject to the same exclusive jurisdiction. Well, I, our argument is that that is not the case, and we rely in that regard upon, again, the 1870 decision of the New York Court of Appeals, which said that although there was, in Article 3, a, a reference to jurisdiction over the submerged land, that was merely subordinate to and in furtherance of the power over the waters. And it was, take, uh, the New York Court of Appeals gave it a very limited reading in that case. And in fact, in the, in the 1908 decision by Justice Holmes, the court specifically upheld the taxation of submerged lands. But how, so, how could it have no meaning? That is, let's assume you're right. You're right that, I'm assuming, that this is within the sovereign you're sovereign. New Jersey has sovereignty yes. because of Article 1. Still, isn't there some kind of jurisdiction to do something Our view given of by Article 3? And, and is, you, you want an injunction. Which injunction says New York can do nothing? Yes. All right. How can it be that they could do nothing when Article 3 says they have jurisdiction over the land below the water and the water? I mean, that maybe that jurisdiction doesn't mean sovereignty. Maybe it only means a few things, like just serve process even. But, but doesn't it mean something? Well, again, I think the, the, we go back to the decision of the New York Court of Appeals in 1870, and what the court said was that this was a jurisdiction over, over navigation. All right. So, and once so. the waters were filled, there was no basis upon which to exercise jurisdiction over ships and vessels on the water that the jurisdiction essentially, there was no basis upon which to exercise that jurisdiction when the land was filled. In other words, exclusive jurisdiction doesn't mean that. It means that the only thing you could deal with is a ship. It so does mean exclusive related to ships, related to so, navigation. So, so suppose there is a ship, a ferry boat, tied up at the pier. Uh, that now is in New Jersey's sovereign territory next to that uh, immigration house, all right? Doesn't New York have jurisdiction over that? That's, co co that's specifically addressed in Article 3, where New York's jurisdiction was recognized. Fine. At least if, if New York has jurisdiction over that, on your theory, how can you receive an injunction, which is what you requested, saying that they couldn't enforce their law at all? Well, I think, that, again, my point is that this is a jurisdiction as it relates to vessels, and if they're tied to a, a, a port uh, facility on the New Jersey side, that creates an entirely different situation than to have filled land. You so what cannot... sort of injunction, this is what's confusing me, the injunction that you requested is an injunction that says New York cannot enforce its laws or assert its jurisdiction. Then once you say that there is something at least they could do, even if it's just to a boat that's tied up, then how could you be entitled to that injunction? That is not, again, the request that we sought relates to exercise of jurisdiction on the land, not on the waters, not on boats who are still on the waters that may very well be tied up on, to a New Jersey pier or to a portion of land that is uh, subject to the jurisdiction of the state. I didn't find in the special master's report a discussion of what exclusive jurisdiction meant. I, I understood that it, he gives, he believes that New Jersey is sovereign, and I accept that. So what are we to do to decide whether exclusive jurisdiction means you can do zero? New York can still do zero in respect to the submerged land. Well, again, it relates to, to the land. 
It relates to the subject matter of that jurisdiction. And as it's been interpreted by the courts, that jurisdiction relates to uh, the subject matter is navigation, uh, pertains to vessels while they are on the waters. And that is the, that is the limit there of the jurisdiction. Well, well the master uh, touched that in, in part at page 67 when he said interpreting ex exclusive jurisdiction in Article 3rd to mean police or legal jurisdiction is the only reading of Article 3 that prevents such serious anomalies. But he, and he, but he addressed it no further than that. Right. Well, I, I think this, uh, this, this specific argument that's now being offered uh, with regard to the, the, some residuum of Article 3 jurisdiction over the, over the field lands is not an issue that was really raised very, very much by the state of New York. It's only come in now in the, in the context of the exceptions. So the master did not really, it was not an argument that was pressed before the special master. Mr. Yanati, I'm, I'm a little uh, curious as to why New Jersey did, did not make uh, the argument, which seems to me available, that, uh, uh, that the compact uh, only gives uh, New York exclusive jurisdiction over lands covered by the Hudson, and these lands are not anymore covered by the Hudson. If, if, if you read that phrase as, as meaning covered from time to time... Well, I think that is essentially, that what, essentially what we have been saying. You put it better than I did. Uh, but I think the, the point is that once they are covered, once they are filled, the, there is, no, uh, there is no, uh, nothing upon which to exercise that jurisdiction. It is, it is I, did not, I did not understand you as having made that argument. Well, uh, that has been our point, and I do believe we, we have that in our brief. But it is our argument that, um, that once the lands were filled, that there is no basis upon which New York may exercise that jurisdiction under Article 3.